Many people ask me about the filtration I have on this 220 gallon tank. Let me show you the filtration here. The water comes in there and then goes through this automatic filter roller. If you don't know about these, it is a really simple concept that the water comes in Pardon my automated light. The water comes in and it goes through this filter roll. Um, it is all the way to the bottom, as you can see. Uh, as this layer gets clogged, the water level inside this thing rises and there is a float switch, which then turns on. Inside this roll is a motor. It turns on and that way new fresh roll gets inserted into the whole system and so water keeps coming out and uh, you never have to change the filter socks after that the water goes through biological uh, media there is a lot of seachem uh, I forget the name of the product but it is the biological media that seachem makes also have some bio bricks in here and then this layer is the last layer of filtration so that the bacteria dead bacteria don't get to the return filter and then that's the return filter it is a CJ Synchra 9.0 I think and that then returns the water through a UV um, unit it's a 57 watt UV unit which I don't actively use. Uh, I have it in my loop, but it's turned off. And then water comes back through those return pipes. And I also have some plants that help me with the filtration. So as you can see right here, I have some Phylodendron Burley Max. It is a plant that one of my friends told me about and you can see the the root structure in the background over there it does a good job of sucking the nitrates out of the water but that's not it i also have a lot of pothos uh, the money plant in my sump and as you can see they have grown quite a bit they get some light from the window right next to the tank and uh, these also do a good job of reducing the nitrates now another thing you would notice is i have some of these uh, insulation uh, sheets behind my tank and i've done that uh, in an attempt to retain as much heat as i can because this is a big tank and it takes a lot of energy for this tank to heat and I keep the temperature at about 84 degree Fahrenheit. There are four 300 watt heaters in there. And these heaters are controlled by, excuse me, one of these units. This is uh, sold by um, Gemco. And it is a really sturdy unit. It can uh, uh, manage up to, I think, 1600 or 1800 watts of uh, power. I'm only at 1200. I have a, a battery operated pump in case there's a failure. And of course, my um, lights are just normal Phoenix. Phoenix? Yeah, Phoenix um, lights. They're not, uh, there's nothing special about them other than the fact that they can, um, they can follow a gradual uh, increase in the brightness and then come down gradually as the night comes. And the discus are of course um, cupia, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correct, cupia 
uh, Alankur, Alankur discus. Uh, they were collected in 2019 season. They got in my tank on March 16th, 2020. The initial six, eight months were brutal. They were infested with um, gill flukes. They had issues in their tummies and they had an active case of hole in the head. Uh, and as a matter of fact, you can even see some of them show uh, some of the markings uh, from the time when they had hole in the head. I'm trying to spot one where I can show you. Uh, there is one with a really big mark right here. See on right above the eye of this fish. And what's interesting about hole in the head is that it's a syndrome. It's not a disease. It's a syndrome. It's a mix of multiple things. And it happens at the same exact spot on both the sides of the fish. So it just does not happen on one side, it happens on both the sides. You can see on this fish as well. Saturday mornings are their fasting days. I did not feed them anything in this morning. And so that's why they're extremely hungry and they're following me around. You would see that if I come to this corner of the tank, and uh, try to show you from this angle. Now I'm on the, on the side of the tank. They will all follow me here. This is a homemade recipe. It does not contain any animal, uh, land animal protein. I should say not just animal because it does contain uh, mahi-mahi, salmon, uh, shrimp, and uh, some scallops. So it does contain seafood. Well, before we start to feed it, first thing first, we gotta turn on the return pump off. And we wanna do that because if we don't do that, a lot of this, a lot of the food particles will start to go in the filter and my filter roller will have to work extra hard to take all of those out of the water. Um, if I turn it off, I give more of a chance for my fish to finish the food before it starts to go in the sump. So that's the only reason. Here we go. And I've learned to feed the food uh, with my hands and that's because if I just put it in the tank it sits at the bottom and one of these fish would uh, claim that piece of food and then would not let anyone else come close to it so the only way I could figure out was feeding the food with my hands so that you know everyone gets a fair chance I'm going to try to keep my camera as far away as I can so you guys can see the whole picture. And in the excitement they do start to bite my hand sometimes. It's really not a bite, it's... Uh, it's... I don't know how to explain that feeling, it's nothing. <laughs> They're the fish that uh, usually eat the detritus in the water and whatever particles uh, that are floating in the water, that's their main source of food in, in the wild. So they don't really have any biting power. Now you would notice that this food um, is very messy and that's just because the latest batch that I made um, was uh, lacking something I think uh, it might have been the amount of shrimp or uh, the amount of gelatin I was supposed to add otherwise it's not this messy it usually sticks together very well but since I've, I had already made it I'm using it it does require me to do frequent water changes which I'm okay with um, the lower the nitrates, the better the fish look. And 
yeah everyone has their preference here some fish like to eat right out of my hand some fish like to eat what has uh, gotten at the bottom And there you have it.